this could possibly be the worst gaming experience in the world. Ray tracing on everyone's least favorite graphics card, the RTX 3050. But really, can it be that bad? Well, there's only one way to find out and that's by benchmarking it. Despite its RTX branding, the 3050 can't really ray trace. It doesn't have the underlying power there. And as soon as you enable ray tracing, you're probably going to be getting not very good performance, especially when compared to rasterization. And a lot of people seem to think Nvidia's superior ray tracing performance is an advantage on the RTX 3050 compared to a similarly priced AMD graphics card, the RX 6600. This GPU will absolutely smoke the 3050 in rasterized performance in pretty much every single resolution. And in my humble opinion, the RX 6600 is a much better graphics card. Not only does it have better value, but it also performs a lot better. So by being an RTX graphics card, how well does the 3050 perform as soon as you enable ray tracing? To find out, I've tested it at 1080p, and for comparison purposes, I've used an RX 6600 as well. All testing has been done in my testing PC, which has a Ryzen 5 7600, 32GB of CL30, 6000MHz DDR5 memory, a Western Digital SN770 2TB NVMe Gen 4 SSD, and an MSI X670E Tomahawk motherboard. Both graphics cards have been left at their stock out of the box settings and both drivers will be listed down there. With that being said, let's get into it. Enabling ray tracing in Cyberpunk 2077 isn't actually that bad of a bet on the RTX 3050 because at 1080p, we're getting just south of 60 frames per second. And in my opinion, this is fairly decent performance. That 1% low is also looking very good compared to the average frame rate. So here, if you really wanted to enable ray tracing on a 3050, I mean, it's not that bad and you could always enable DLSS to get a bit more performance, but still keep it to rasterization. And speaking of which, the RX 6600 just cannot compete with the 3050 with ray tracing enabled. Jedi Survivor with ray tracing is very rough for this graphics card. 30 FPS on average feels very last gen at this point and the 1% low at 19 isn't particularly great either. Yes, this is expected with Jedi Survivor as it's a technical disaster because it's not very optimized, let's be honest here. But good news for RX 6600 owners, you will be getting more performance with both the averages and 1% lows here, so yeah, this is a big win for this graphics card. Hogwarts Legacy is kind of just in that no man's land of performance. You're getting not even 50 frames per second on average with a pretty weak 1% low, let's be honest. So performance with ray tracing enabled in Hogwarts Legacy isn't particularly brilliant. Definitely keep it to rasterization in this title. And with the AMD graphics card, you're getting one frame less on average, but the 1% low is slightly better. So yeah, it's not really going to be that much of a difference between both of these GPUs. Spider-Man Remastered is the only title that saw more than 60 frames per second today as we got 66 FPS for the average on the 3050. And then the 1% low by Spider-Man standards is looking quite good at 51. So if you wanted a budget ray tracing experience and you already own a 3050, you could enable it in Spider-Man. To be fair, the game does look quite good. And if you're on Team Red, you're not going to be getting more than 60 frames per second on average. So I don't recommend it with the RX 6600 if I'm honest. The Witcher 3 is harder to run with ray tracing than what Cyberpunk is, which is kind of surprising to me. That is because 30 frames per second on average isn't really that playable and the 1% low was kind of all over the place. Where the 1% low was very bad though is with the AMD graphics card as it just got eight. Yes, eight frames per second for a 1% low means the game's a bit of a stutter fest. However, the RX 6600 did get one more frame on average so I um, guess that counts for something, but either card in this title, do not enable ray tracing. So across the games I've tested today, and albeit there weren't a lot, I would say the RTX 3050 leaves a little more to be desired here. As a PC gamer, I'd wager you want at least 60 frames per second in your titles, and the only game to get that today was Spider-Man Remastered. Every other game got below 60 FPS, and I mean, some were quite close, like Cyberpunk that got 58 frames a second. So you could always enable one of Nvidia's biggest benefits, which is 
DLSS. But the frame rate isn't the only problem because other settings had to be sacrificed. Because of the 8GB of VRAM on a budget graphics card like the 3050 or RX 6600, you will have to be limiting texture sizes, which is not great because a lot of games, even at 1080p, will use more than 8GB of VRAM with ray tracing enabled. However, if you were to go with rasterization, especially at 1080p, you could easily enable high or ultra textures in basically every single game out there. And even if these GPUs had 12 or 16 gigabytes of VRAM, they still don't have the raw performance under them to get more than 60 frames per second at 1080p with ray tracing enabled. One thing I did learn while testing both these GPUs is the RTX 3050 is technically a better ray tracing graphics card. The RX 6600 lagged behind across the games I've tested today by about 5%, which I mean is not a massive margin by any means, but I think it still goes to show that any budget graphics card, especially ones of this caliber, can't really enable ray tracing by any stretch of the imagination. And this is why I say ray tracing is a premium feature which shouldn't really be a consideration on budget graphics cards like the 3050 and RX 6600. They simply don't have the power to even properly ray trace and this is why you should stick to rasterization. And if you're sticking to rasterization, you may as well go with the RX 6600. Here it will have much more performance with ray tracing disabled and it will also do this while consuming less power because in my testing this consumed about 125 watts whereas the RX 6600 capped out at around 100 while getting more frames so that means it's a more efficient card. And also I know this is heavily model dependent this Gigabyte Eagle just gets really hot for some reason it gets to around 81 degrees C whereas the Mech 2X RX 6600 I've got stays relatively cool in like the low 60s so that's something to keep in mind but it is model dependent. So the only realistic advantage I could think of for the RTX 3050 is CUDA acceleration if you're a video editor you probably get more performance with this GPU and DLSS but where you will need DLSS on the 3050 you probably won't need FSR on the RX 6600 so it is kind of an advantage and not an advantage at the same time if that makes sense. Regardless, as I've said, budget graphics cards and ray tracing simply do not mix. They don't have the VRAM and they don't have the performance prior to enabling ray tracing. So this is why if you're in the market for a budget GPU, keep to rasterization and I think you'll be having a good gaming experience. So if you want to see how both of these GPUs get on at rasterized performance, then both there, they've been benchmarked. So with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.